Hey everybody, I'm Aaron with Fleetistics, and today we're going to be talking about the Smart One Solar device from Global Star. The Smart One Solar is an asset tracker that uses satellite communication instead of cellular communication to give coverage all over the world in most areas of the world uh, where 99.9% .9 of people are and where commerce is taking place. Uh, the Smart One Solar has been around for quite some time. It is a great unit. Uh, there are a couple new iterations coming out with improvements, but in general, it is a very rugged unit. Uh, it is intrinsically safe, meaning that it can be used in an oil and gas environment, and it is also built to military specification, uh, just indicating how rugged it really is. The only general rule of thumb that I tell people is don't pressure wash it under three feet. If you do that, you'll avoid water intrusion, and this device is... Um, advertised to have a 10-year field service life and because it uses solar technology to recharge the batteries you're never chasing batteries around and when you compare the cost of this unit up front it is more expensive than the battery units but you are saving a huge amount of time and wages and travel and convenience every few years as you've got to replace batteries on other devices uh, such as the AT5500C, which uses a couple AA lithium-ion batteries. And it's inexpensive, which is an attractive up front, but you know, every year you're replacing batteries on that. And what happens is, if you don't get to the batteries um, you know, to get them replaced before the batteries go dead, you may actually never be able to find the asset. And that has happened to customers. They lose uh, trailers that are parked in yards somewhere around this country, and then the batteries go dead because they didn't get to them and voila, now they don't know where their assets are. So how many trailers do you have to lose in order to cover the cost differential between a self-sustaining unit that'll last 10 years and a battery power unit that you gotta deal with every couple years? So think about that when you're really trying to make a, a decision on what's gonna be better for you in the long run, right? It's pretty obvious to me. We sell both, so we'd be happy to help you with both, but you know, uh, I would highly recommend the Smart One Solar over anything else because of those downstream logistical challenges. Uh, one of the very first things you need to understand about this device is how to turn the device on and off. And what we have here with this little black magnet is uh, the on and off switch. And you can loosen that screw and you can simply pull that little piece off and there's a magnet in here. And once it is removed, this is now turned on. And you want to hang on to these because if you're going to ship this to somebody else, you need to install the switch and turn it off again for shipping. Uh, you can't ship lithium ion batteries that are active and can be turned on. So keep that in mind. Hang on to those. The other thing is that when you ship this to somebody, you need to make sure that they get the same information. And the reason for that is because we've had customers, they ship a unit out and maybe they put this unit on a rail car or a barge or you know a truck going cross country or from the arctic circle down to alaska something like that and the recipient didn't know that they had to remove that switch in order to turn the unit on so they think the unit's not reporting or reporting and they're highly disappointed and then they start calling us and we say well you know we tested it before it left here it works we know it works, you know, once you get the unit, let's take a look at it, and sure enough, it comes back and that rubber switch is still on there. So uh, communicate internally when you, when you are using this particular device. Next, we're gonna talk about mounting, and there are a couple different mounting options. The, what you see on here are rubberized magnets. Uh, that is not standard. Those are Amazon magnets for about 10, 15 bucks. And uh, magnets are a great way to do things. They're very secure. These are very strong magnets. And the rubber feet uh, prevent the, uh, you know, the magnets from interacting with the metal on the asset. But also, if you're concerned about putting it on a, like a nicer vehicle for some reason, this won't scratch the vehicle. Uh, I went to put this on my new um, F450, and I found out they are now making the F450s in aluminum, so it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't you know, uh, adhere to the vehicle. So this isn't going to work for me. But I wanted to show it to you because it's a good option for, in a lot of different uh, cases. Obviously, yellow iron uh, bulldozers and front end loaders and excavators and cranes and things like that are all steel. So this type of magnetic mount would work well. Um, when these are not in there, these are simply open ports that you can put a sheet metal screw through. You may want to consider putting a small rubber washer underneath there. If this is on a cargo container so you don't get a drip uh, potentially into the cargo container leading to mold over months or years or potentially ruining someone else's uh, contents inside your shipping container. 
And then the last option is a, a adhesive pad. Um, you know, you got to clean the surface real well with some kind of alcohol pad to get it nice and clean. And then you simply uh, take this and stick it onto this, peel this off and stick it onto the asset and away you go. Uh, this is my least favorite. Uh, they do work well, but what happens over five or ten years of sunshine, rain, freezing weather, and this pad uh, deteriorates, then could it come off? Yeah, potentially. So I prefer sheet metal screws or even the magnets aren't going to change their uh, you know, hold strength over a long period of time. So think about what's going to work best for you guys and make that decision on your own. Uh, while I've got you here, I do want to let you know that Fleetistics has uh, fleet dash cams. We've got programs and an industry first program called the Pay As You Go program. You pay $12.95 a month and you don't pay any more unless you actually use the dash cam. So if you have an accident, then you would you know pay just for the video clip that you downloaded. But if you had 100 other vehicles and you didn't use those other uh, dash cams throughout the course of the month, you'd only pay the $12.95. And that is half the price of most dash cams on a monthly basis. So it's really a revolutionary type program. We do have traditional dash cam uh, you know, programs with higher monthly service subscriptions for people that want more access, all the way up to artificial intelligence. So we've got lots of options, the full spectrum of options for dash cams. And then obviously we also do GPS tracking and telematics for uh, trucks and buses. Uh, we, we can get some telematics off heavy equipment if that's important to you. So we track almost anything uh, related to fleet operations. So give us a call if you need any of those types of things. Um, and then the, the last thing is actually when you go to mount this device on something, right? So uh, obviously with a solar panel being on here, uh, if that gets covered in ice or snow or dust in a mine, things like that, then the solar panel is going to not be able to recharge as effectively. So you want to make sure that you mount this vertically like this so water and rain and snow will actually clean the solar panel itself over a period of time and it'll uh, continue the optimum performance. The, uh, the other thing is that satellite communication is very different than cellular. You need direct line of sight from the device to the satellites in the sky. What that means is you can't have any overhead vegetation. You can't be under a pole barn. You can't be in a garage. You know, really, you just can't have anything above this. The wavelengths are very different between satellite communication and cellular. Uh, you know, we all know from cellular communication that you can be in a building and, you know, track yourself in your home now. Uh, but also, just about any place else you go under normal situations, you can you can track and communicate, right? So, uh, keep that in mind when you're, when you're mounting this and to manage your expectations as to when this is going to be effective. If you park this under a shaded area, like we had a customer who had a bunch of generators, parked them under an overhang, and consequently never got enough sun in order to be able to recharge the battery effectively over a period of time, they went dead and never worked, right? You have to take those type of environmental factors into account. So um, that's another thing. And the last thing I'll say about this type of communication, with satellite communication, it's a lot more expensive than cellular. Right, and, and I say more expensive because it's relative. Sending a text message might cost you one one hundredth of a penny, you know, whereas sending that same text message via satellite is going to cost you a penny. So uh, the way these devices communicate is different. So, uh, for example, this device can be programmed to update three times a day. It can be programmed to... Uh, update every 15 minutes when it's in motion. It can be programmed a couple different ways to do different things. Uh, one super important point is to understand that this device cannot be programmed over the air, which means that you want to buy one, you want to do testing on one. If you don't like the configuration, you have to send it back to us. We'll change the configuration, test it, send it back to you, and work through that process to make sure that you get it right. If all you want is three updates a day at 9 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and 8 o'clock at night, that's pretty straightforward, but you can still get one and try it and see, you know, how it looks and what it does before you go and deploy. So, uh, you know, that is very, very important to understand about these devices. But when this device transmits, let's say it's supposed to transmit at 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, it's under an overhang for some reason or it's, you know, the, the truck was parked under some trees and it tries to transmit at 9. If it can't transmit at 9 you're not going to get another location update until 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the next scheduled 
um, you know, update rate or based on the programming at the next scheduled activity. So um, you have to understand that just to manage your expectations. Um, you know, these are great for, you know, where's my trailer? You know, where's my rail car? You know, you got a rail yard with hundreds or thousands of rail cars. You know, this is the type of thing that can help you find an asset and, and get it uh, back into service. If you're hauling slag from an oil and gas field or something like that, and you're moving it from the Arctic Circle down to Fairbanks to put it on a barge or something, then you can track in those very, very remote areas as well. Um, so it has great applications. And again, because you're not swapping batteries on this thing, you know, it's something that you can put out there and then hopefully not have to think about again for at least 10 years. So if you have any questions uh, about this, you want to learn more about uh, any of the products or services that we have to offer, please contact Fleetistics at Fleetistics.com or just pick up the phone. Give us a call, 855-300-0527. That's 855-300-0527. Uh, you know, we'd love to answer the phone because it means... We're talking to customers and building relationships and helping people solve business problems out there. So contact us and we'll help you solve your problems as well. Thank you and have a great day.